Well, after the Andy Griffith show, my parents separated and we moved back to Louisiana, which is where I came from. Oh, that was just devastating, you know, my, my, uh, my parents separating and, and uh, that whole thing was just a complete, like atom bomb, just was blown up and my whole life was destroyed and uh, um, my little world was gone, you know. And so we moved back to Louisiana and uh, back in Louisiana, uh, of course, how, how old were you? 15. I, I left all my friends in, in, back in, in LA and moved to Louisiana. It was a complete different culture, different whole set of things that I had to fit in with. And then the fact that my parents separated was another thing that, that um, really uh, I was ashamed about, you know, because back then, you know, there, there wasn't a lot of uh, people didn't really talk a lot about divorce, you know, and stuff. I mean, there was divorce and stuff, but I mean, uh, it just was something that, you know, my mother had to get a job. She was a housewife. We had to live with our aunts and uncles who uh, took care of us and uh, provided for us. And if it wasn't for them, I mean, we really wouldn't have been able to survive. My dad remarried. He had an affair with a, a, a lady at a another studio, uh, whom I, today, I, I love, and we have a good relationship and stuff. But um, it, at the time, it was really devastating for me to have to change and to move into another state and to move in with another set of friends and try to fit in with people. And, and back in those days, that was 1966, um, I began to play music and play, play in bands, garage bands, school, high school bands type things, um, rock bands. And drugs and smoking and drinking began to, to get real big in my life. And so um, at that time, I just didn't really care. You know, I really, I really, um, you know, I was raised in a, in a, in a religious home and um, I sort of, when my parents separated, I kind of had a uh, sort of hard-hearted toward God, you know, and had a hard heart toward Him and the idea of God and all that. So I just, just really rebelled and didn't really want to, didn't really want to, uh, didn't really care about myself at that point, you know. Now, when you moved to Louisiana, did people know who you were? Yeah, yeah, they did. Was that a, a help or a hindrance, you think? I thought it was a hindrance. <laughs> but, uh, I mean, at the time, it, it kind of was, you know, in a way, but it, it, it always has been a help. It always has been a help and a hindrance in, in certain ways to me, um, especially more back then because I wanted to distance myself from that whole thing and distance myself from the whole aspect of... Um, being little Ricky and, and this little actor character from, from Hollywood and uh, Isle of Lucy show. Back in those days, the Isle of Lucy show wasn't really, you know, it didn't become like a legend. It was kind of transitioning from uh, the first time showing to, you know, it was in kind of like a twilight zone at that point. So there was other things going on. And, you know, the whole hippie, counterculture thing was going on, uh, counter-revolutionary culture, uh, the whole drug thing. The music scene was, was emerging, and so being 15, 16 years old, 17 years old, I was right in the middle of it in Louisiana. And so in the music scene there, we began to play rock, and I began to uh, take part in all the things that were part of that world. Would you say that Little Ricky was kind of square in that sense for that for the world that you are now in yes I would say that to me anyway but I mean you know square is you can get beyond square and still be recognized and so I was in that in that that sense I, I was still there was something still to respect about the whole thing but it was generally square you know as far as yeah, yeah, you know, but this is this is what's really coming in right now is this stuff. 
And so I wanted to be on that wave instead of this other wave. 